Good evening. Welcome. It's wonderful to be on Gino's spot. Relax, sit down. Coming out of PE town. Got a drink, find a shot. Never mind your liver, get to Gino's spot. Gino's spot. Get to Gino's spot. Gino's spot. Have a laugh, have a giggle, and exercise your middle. Have a Gino shot. Gino shot. Get to Gino's spot. Welcome to Gino's Spot, ladies and gentlemen, on uh, this Tuesday, the ooh, the 27th of December. Uh, a fantastic time for family, uh, getting to see everybody again um, after a year of, of uh, hard work. And um, we have been touring. Uh, it's been it's been fantastic. Our, our uh, um, super lekker summer tour has been going very well. Uh, our next stint is going to be on the 29th of uh, of December. So don't miss out. 29th of December at uh, the Red Apple in Bushman's River. We're going to be heading to Bushman's, which is uh, which is real fun. I think it's the first time we've done something there. Um, and we're going to be doing the um, the songs that rocked our world, of course. And then on the 4th of January, we're also going to be at the same place. Bushmans and of course Old Year's Eve we're, um, I'm in uh, I'm in Bikwini this year which is going to be uh, which going to be great fun and um, thank you to our sponsors to Fitch and Leeds to Spa uh, as well Spa um, Roseanne uh, Stapes um, the guys that have that have really been supporting us throughout this this entire time uh, and keeping Gino Spot going thank you to uh, Spa uh, like I said Fitch and Leeds Amobia our, our internet service provider always um, always saying uh, saying thank you to them for for supporting Nicola and um, and for, for the year you know for the for another yet another year of Gino spot um, we've had an, we've had an interesting year it's been fantastic some amazing guests that we've had on and uh, and Gino spot has kind of taken on a new uh, new path and and uh, I think it's um, I think it's good fun it's a um, pretty much we've got to keep our community going we've got to keep our community motivated and keep us uh, keep us together make make contacts get our get our contacts together make sure that we can as a as the Eastern Cape just move forward as one and uh, and we we hope to get some uh, crazy guests on this year as well some um, some amazing people some entrepreneurs we've got uh, we've got all sorts planned for for this coming year as well so we are not giving up we are going and uh, we are heading into the new year 2023 so enjoy your new years have wherever you are um, drive carefully make sure that uh, it's a marathon you know don't don't overdo it <laughs> you got to you got to get through the whole season we'll see you Next week, Gino Spot. At the moment, um, it, it, like see, you went to Namibia. You're doing these. You're doing these. Uh, welcome, 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 welcome. So, so you follow them down. There was a. I remember we when we went out, we had to go quite far out, almost like in uh, to the wild side. Yeah, that's right. Because they sometimes bypass. Yes, they yeah. sometimes bypass. Um, when they when they're doing their northern migration, which is I think when you were on, so yeah. they're coming to Cape Recife and they don't come into the bay they go straight across to Bird Island because okay. they're trying to get to where they're going yes. females need to cough okay, okay. and the males yeah. have swum 8,000 kilometers for sex yeah, for, for a bit for of sex. A, so Mickey, when, a bit of Mickey yum yum so when he gets there they're like no headaches please they don't know this I <laughs> want it now I want it now, now. now. I'll sing you this cool okay. song well, yes. and they <laughs> sing the song and then they book so, so they do a sing song. It's a yeah. sing song. So they're all in a rush. They're all in okay. a rush to get there. Once they've yeah. had, once he's had it over, the testosterone okay. levels down. Okay. So that's amazing how they have to get back. there. They got to get there. That's the spot. It's like date night, baby. That's well, right. You imagine trying to get an erection in two degrees Celsius water. <laughs> it wouldn't happen. It's not. It's quite difficult. I think. <laughs> they need the there's water. Thirty degrees. Yeah. <laughs> thirty degrees up there. Up there. Yeah. Equator. Yeah. Thirty. Thirty-two. So okay, and they cough up there as they well. They cough there, and then uh, very interesting, you know, that the female, um, you know, she she breastfeeds. Okay. Like we monitor the ones uh, besides the humpbacks in 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 I'll go baby, we've got the southern right whale, okay. which was the right whale to hunt because of yeah. very big, lots of these baiting plates in the mouth, which was oh. like the plastic in the old days. Okay, lots okay. of fat. They used to wow. melt the fat down to. Um, Lubricate machinery to light street lamps to make vessels and all whatever. sorts of stuff. Yeah. We don't know about that. So they come in and they've moved away from Kocha. You know, there's a lot of noise 
Uh-huh. at Kuche from the, the generators on the ships. Okay. So it seems the whales have all moved off to Sunday's River. Oh. And we're monitoring this year for 81 days. Wow. Yeah. And when that calf gets to about 8, eight meters, mm-hmm. it's ready to do the journey back. Okay. Now, I think that mother that's come here <laughs> hasn't eaten, eh? Wow. No eating on the way here. Really? Birth, yeah. breastfeeding, a couple of hundred liters a day. That milk is like, it's almost like 90% fat, a huge fat content. Really? It's like toothpaste. It <laughs> actually squirts that milk from the nipple yeah. into the calf's mouth. Yo. And this calf... Through grows, the water. Through the water. So that's like... <laughs> the calf puts its tongue in like a, like a U-shape like yeah. that. Yeah. And then the female pushes the nipple into there, from the mammary gland. And then it squirts that very, very thin. Oh, they're trying to swim and oh my God. And like, they just keep quiet and they don't talk. Do they, do they just, do they just lie in the same spot? Or do yeah, they, it comes they underneath and oh, the whale just we'll goes slowly. A little bit off the shore where there's yeah. not too much movement. So okay. they don't have to expend energy. Yes. And they don't talk to each other. Oh, really? You know why? Because oh, danger, because of the, the, the yes. calves, I suppose. Killer whales. So if killer whales pick up a uh, mother calf yeah. talking, they'll be yeah. in and poof, kill the calf, all they eat is the tongue. But in that shallow water, it's very difficult for a killer whale to actually attack okay, because, from underneath. because it's, it's, it's quite shallow and, yes. and the calf can like avoid it. And if you get slapped by a, a female whale, it's, and the killer whale gets a smack to the head. And they really? Yeah. Oh, no. They can do that. No, so. yeah, yeah, they can. And they can aim it. Yeah. The tail. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my Even soul. they got you. They, otherwise, they wouldn't be alive. Yeah, know? yeah, for sure. My okay. sweet William and myself, we're very naughty. <laughs> so I'm not even going to talk about restaurants and bathrooms. And... <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> Gary's got some questions. What the most embarrassing thing you've ever worn? I don't know, it might, it might be that flipping du- that duo dildo that you had. Listen, no, I've worn many more, very. So once I was also invited to, I don't know why did I go in a kilt. It's a dildo. Yeah, I, I mean, I, it was the same thing from those naughty bloody boys that were in my l- luncheon club. So I went, and what was it? And I remember I wore a kilt. And yeah. under my kilt, I had the two-sided penis. Was the time I <laughs> then, I, it over. then I remember we were sitting outside. And I made sure that I was sitting like this, and then the big dong was hanging down. <laughs> and everyone was like looking at me. Now, I've worn some very strange things in my life. I mean, oh, whoa, very strange. Sure. Uh, I, I Lots. Think, uh, and I've, I've worn some strange stuff, but I think yeah. you've got me beat. <laughs> yeah, no, but that, that's what I'm just even trying to think. I mean, I, I mean, those... You see, you said you like dress-up toys. Uh, yeah, I do remember that Tracy, that Tracy, the one that lives in Bath that I told you yes, about. Yes. So we had a farewell for her, the girls, at, mm-hmm. at our house. And the final dress-up, I dressed up about seven different outfits that night and been seven different people. Oh, right. And the final was my farewell to my Tracy. So I remember <laughs> saying to my daughter Angie, Okay, this is very rude. Am I allowed to yes, say Yes, you can say rude. Angie, put Vaseline all over my cookie. All over. <laughs> then I sprinkled it all with glitter. Glitter. Then I put Vaseline on my nipples and sprinkled that all with glitter. Then I had a see-through piece of chiffon yes. that I waved around my body like that, but with all the glitter showing through. I mean, all my staff were there. Then I came through and did a, like, a song to my <laughs> darling... <laughs> to my darling Tracy. I mean... Really, poor girls that had to witness that. <laughs> but I think that's most probably one of my works. Okay, Completely yes, see through it. with glitter. That would take, that would take it for yeah. me. That would take it for yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, yes. Yeah, but I did do quite a few TV ads. The one that went all over South Africa, it was, uh, uh, it was massive billboards all over South mm-hmm. Africa, was for Benson and Hedges cigarettes. Yes, uh, was it Fires that was talking about the Benson and Hedges? Casey, Casey, yes, about yes. your Benson and Hedges ad. Yeah, we did, yeah. Yes, Jeez, that was all over. I mean, I, I think we, the, that thing was shot in about 1992. Yeah. And it, when we went, when I went to London, I, I took a whole group of guys to London when I was in the, in the flooring industry with, yeah. with Van Dyke Carpets. And there was a guy called Leon Dirksen yeah. that came with us. So we, we took all our retailers, their suppliers, we took them to London, Jeez. and we and this Leon Dirksen, yeah. beautiful man from the Free State. I don't think Free Star. He, I don't think he'd ever left Bloemfontein before. Yes. He, he arrived in London in the middle of January with two T-shirts, kind of scenario. 
And he was about three times myself. He played prop for free state. Yeah, yeah that, those are the guys. Yeah, so, uh, well, and so anyway, he got there and he was bitterly cold. So I gave him my overcoat, you know. Just, I was slightly yeah. out of weight, about 10, 10 kilos more than I do now. Yeah. And, and, but still, the thing only fitted in. Uh, <laughs> so we got to London and we know, sitting down in the restaurant, and he's never been anywhere in his life. He's like this. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking delicious so, so, English. So, so anyway, I was like, cheers, we're in this restaurant and uh, what are liver onions? Liver and onions and mash. Yeah. So that's what I order. So Leon, what you do like? He says, no, whatever you have. Yeah. Because he's, because he doesn't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, come on, I'm yeah, so, 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 yeah, in. So we sit down, we have this liver and onions, and there's a a sugar bowl. There's all yeah. sugar bowls. Remember, you should get the, the wimpy with the spout there. And yes, 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 sugar, yes. Like sugar yeah, yeah, yeah. So Leon says, uh, sugar bicky soaked. <laughs> so I give him the sugar bowl. He, <laughs> he throws it on. Oh, my God. So anyway, well, so, <laughs> so anyway, to get back to the vets and the edges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He eventually got transferred from Brimpertang to Durban, which is the Van Dijk head office. Yeah. And he finds me one day. That's, he says, hey, Goff. Golf, yes, golf. I said, yes, that's two Fs. Huh? <laughs> yes. I said, hey, golf. He says, I just drove over you. I said, what you talking about? <laughs> he says, no, golf, I just drove over you on the highway here. He says, they've got a big billboard of you. <laughs> <laughs> and it's blown over. They've got a hurricane. Oh, yeah. and it's blown over and it's lying on the highway. And it <laughs> was the Benson and Hedges ad and he drove over me. <laughs> 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 What was quite interesting, but it was frightening as well, was when I faced Mike Proctor for the first time. I couldn't well, believe anybody could bowl as quickly as him and uh, swing the ball as much as he did. I like yeah, unbelievable. On the wrong foot, eh? When he used to whip that arm yeah, around. And it's like flying past you, you know, and playing and missing, Jeez. playing and missing all day long, sort of thing. Um, that stands out. Mm -hmm. um, um, yeah, and, and interesting people sometimes, you know, there's a guy called Johan de Brain who played a lot for the spring box, yeah. and he only had one eye. The other one was a glass oh. eye. And, <laughs> yeah. and he took it out one day to show me what it looked like. And, <laughs> really? Go to show. Yeah, close to painting. <laughs> Check <laughs> you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but there were interesting people, you know, that uh, um, one interesting person that I played cricket against. Um, yeah. Oh, my goodness, Tomo. <laughs> Tomo is saying I was a... That's uh, me and Martin left, yeah. Um, Did you swim across the boot? Yeah, you know, we had those floods in 68. Yes, yes. And then 81. Yes, 81. Yes, yes. I remember. In 1981, 81. Martin Neft is the guy that gets up very early in the morning. Yeah. He was knocking on my door in 7th Avenue and he was down the road. He said, We've got to go now. There's a flood yeah. on the go, you know. Now, if you remember the flood in 81, I mean, you were still very young yeah. then. Yes. But no, I remember walking in, in, into my, I was in Villiers Road at the time, and I walked up the passage into water, and I thought, yes, like yeah. I've never seen water yet. Yeah. And we and got the, the day of school. And down First Avenue, Newton Park there. And, uh, yes. Yeah, and Neft said, uh, we got to swim at the boot. We, we, went, <laughs> we went, we couldn't go down Brickmaker's Cliff because it had collapsed. You know, yes. it was, you could hardly, it was a nightmare, eh? And yeah, the boot yeah. was going. Eh? Um, it was. It was. There was a huge current coming down, and really? there were motor cars and trees and all sorts of things <laughs> coming down. You know, it's left, we can't do this. You know, this is crazy. Now we must swim to the tunnel because the water yeah. was lapping the crossbar. That's how deep okay. it was. You know? But it wow. was flowing. Eh? Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, never again. I mean, okay, so you swam it, but you made it. And, uh, we, <laughs> no, we didn't get there. No, no, we didn't. Oh, get, no, didn't. We didn't back. no, it was hectic, man. I mean, okay. honestly, okay. it was a stupid thing to do. <laughs> a life or death experience. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Oh, my word. Uh, the biggest cha challenge facing you right now? I, I would think right now it's, well, obviously COVID. Yeah. And also your age. Yeah. yeah. Where are you in your life? Yes. Because now yes. for the first time you're starting to think, yeah, there's things What's like your age at the moment? 62. 62 now. Okay, yeah. okay. Things that you'd like to do. Yes. Um, What's important, I suppose. Yeah, and uh, those things change. It's quite dramatic. I've, yeah. I've kept quite a lot of notes that I've written through my life. Okay. And I remember when I was like 18, um, driving the certain trucks, and this guy next to my dad's mate said, where do you want to be when you're 40? Yeah. I remember telling him I want to be retired at 40, like, <laughs> like a hole in my head. <laughs> 
and I remember all those things, yeah. you know, and you've gone back and I suppose things, the, the important things change. Yeah. And I think probably this age in your life, yeah. they actually change quite dramatically. Yes. What is important and what isn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I, <clears throat> the, the one thing I, I really want to say tonight, I remember saying, I'll never come and live in the Eastern Cape. And I've been in PE for 35 years or whatever it is. <laughs> yes. This town has been so good to me. Really. It has yeah. been, I've been truly blessed yeah. with the most incredible people who've worked for me, friends and what have you. Yeah. And I think PE can do that. It's small enough to be that. Yes, yes. Um, it's like that. East London is yeah. a farming town. PE is also small yeah, enough it's to just, have that con those connections. It's so easy to live here. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, the story right. that him and Fires are going on and on yes, about. Yes, yes. Was the. Philip, I'm going to take this off so I can't hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it, it was the story of when the, the Zimbabwe uh, uh, railways uh, put together a new ticketing system. Okay. And they computerized the ticketing system. Yes. You see. So on this particular day, this guy arrives at the ticket office and he says, I want a ticket for Mombasa. <laughs> okay. And the guy sitting at this computer says, Sir, we have got a new system here. <laughs> when I punch on this system, <laughs> later on, your ticket is going to jump out. Just like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. I want a ticket for Mombasa. Okay. M O M. B A Z A Enter. Yeah. He said, uh, You want a bedding? He said, No, don't worry about the bedding. We've got the blankets. We've got the <laughs> sleeping bags. Okay. No bedding. Enter. <laughs> he said, You want a meal ticket? He said, No, we've got the nachis. We've got the bananas. No meal ticket needed. No meal ticket. Enter. Mm. He said, Sir, watch this now. I'm going to push F2. Your ticket going to jump out. Yeah. F2 on the screen, error. Oh dear. Oh. <laughs> Let us start again. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. I want a ticket for Mombasa. M O M B A Z A. Enter. He <laughs> said, uh, bedding? No, I told you. We've got the blankets. We've got the sleeping bag. <laughs> no bedding. Enter. A uh, meal ticket? Okay, maybe, because you have eaten the nachos and the, and the bananas while you are messing yeah, around. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you want to... No, don't worry about the meal ticket. No meal ticket. Okay. Enter. F2. Error. Jesus. <laughs> Where is this Mombasa? He said he's waiting in the car for his ticket. <laughs> 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 oh dear. <laughs> oh, classic. Our team was uh, very fit. I mean, yeah. we practice every day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, every every day, and yeah. uh, that was sure. that helped us. And for the love of it, you know, Blani, that was not like you were getting lots of money. Uh, I mean, you, you never money. Get, you, we you didn't never make get money. We got an audience, half a piece of money. <laughs> You didn't used to carry around bags of money like uh, like this Oaks for the World Cup soccer, the Oaks. You didn't have to have that sort of stuff. Yeah, the rugby. So you, didn't, you never saw that sort of stuff happening there, that bags mm -hmm. of money stuff. No. Uh, when I play for the Springboks, uh, if you play, if we play against the All Blacks, say yeah. for instance in, in, at Alice Park. Yeah. We, play, we, uh, you, we get together on the, on the, on the Wednesday. Yeah. So it's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's five days, 100 rand a day. So it's 500 rand for sure, the week. Okay. For the weekend. If you're okay. playing on the coast in Cape Town, PE, yeah. you're only allowed to get together on a Thursday. Yeah. Okay, so, so it's yeah, 400 yeah, rand. Yeah. So, so, so we never had a chance, and these guys are coming together now a month, yeah. two months before. Yeah. And they practice and, and they get together they do the whole thing but it's a and our team science. A, our team you're only allowed to announce a team a week before the test match okay okay so, so you can't practice before uh, with, with before the same that. lineup yeah, oh, that was uh, i mean that they were so strict about it yeah 
So, uh, yeah. The amateur thing, because eh? so, I mean, these days it's all about the sponsorships. You get get on a Thursday, yeah. what can you do? Mm. I mean, you can't let the guys run like mad. So I have to ah. do a game plan. We also had a game plan. Okay, so okay. You, these guys think they've got a, had a game. Yeah, they but got they haven't got plan. a game. We also had one. <laughs> and uh, so on a Thursday, you go through your moves and yeah. your yeah. stuff. And so do you have to play. You know, my, 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 my boys turn 21 and then they can pick three things they want to do with me. Yeah. yeah. So my oldest son, now I've got to go surfing with him and uh, and I've got to do a CFA with him. Okay. I mean, goodness gracious, to become a certified financial See, analyst at my age. Like, you know, the papers are like this and um, oh, okay. you ask me what my hobbies are. My hobbies now trying to pass the CFA and learn how to surf, <laughs> you know. So, um, um, but it's all part. I mean, when we turned, um, one of the nicest things I've done in my yeah. life is... Um, uh, when I turned 50, it took 100 days off. Hey, yo! Um, and it was just, just incredible. Um, 100 days? 100 days. Out of your year? You, you know, um, That's a third of your year? Yeah, yeah. So I'm a bit, I like okay. numbers, so I like, okay. I like the meaning of numbers. So yes. turning 50, 50 times 2, 100 days off. And uh, mm -hmm. we went traveling and um, learned to do headstands and a few things yeah. and, and a few other things. But the best thing I did was, <laughs> best thing was that was wake up at Little Warmer Golf Course yeah. and walk to Seattle. Yeah. And just hang around the coffee shops and uh, for an hour yeah. or two, and coming back home and having absolutely nothing to do. I love it. And and I didn't do it too because I'm lazy or didn't want to go back to work. I did it yeah. so that we could um, you know, I could work till I'm seventy five, eighty. Because yeah, so okay. I love what I do, you know. So, so you decided to have a, a, a just take a, a specific break. Specific break, and yeah. I'm going to do it again. I'll, I'll do it next year again when okay. I turn fifty five, and then I don't think I'm going to wait five years at a time. I might go every okay. two or three years. <laughs> yeah. But 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 yeah. but at the last day of the hundred days, so I learned to do a bit of yeah. yoga and do the headstands. And in Bali, you did a hundred days. Um, I did a hundred days headstand. Okay. Hundred seconds. Uh, uh, hundred seconds. Hundred seconds. Hundred seconds. I've got a beautiful view of headstand. So and that's my new party trick. I can do a headstand. Okay. Oh, so nice. Nice, yeah. Our little building was built in 1868. That's 1868. Unbelievable. And this side came up was 1869, yeah. but that side was the oldest at 1858. Wow. I think it's one of the very first ones in South End. Yo. And this one on the right, who's a youngster called Jamie now owns it. His folks bought it for and he's does bicycle repairs. Oh, he's, he's a nice youngster with, but he's bloody cocky, but he's a nice youngster. <laughs> <otherwise>. <laughs> Lovely youngster. But <laughs> Jamie, cocky, yeah, that's how yeah, youngsters yeah. are. <laughs> yeah. His mom is well, and your mum and dad will, are watching, I'm sure. Okay, oh, excellent. And she to, uh, it's a bit, a little, bit of a long story. Do you want to go for it? Yeah, I like it. And there's a woman staying there, I won't mention her name and that. Right. But she This is before he bought it. Yes, okay, before right. she was, and she was renting from her brother, and yeah, okay. she gave me a hard time about the noise, and she, geez, they gave me a hard time, okay. and I found out from Gary, who owns the, this little triangle petrol station yes. over the road, yes. that, the, that the brother wanted to move to Cape Town, okay. so he was keen to sell, so I negotiated with him without her knowing, oh. and I had great delight. In telling her I'm the new owner out. <laughs> out she went. <laughs> so that was the history of that. I, mean, I fixed it up and we sold that wow, to Jamie's okay, folks, okay. Uh, Tanya and uh, Franz Lutz. Okay, okay. They're well known in St. Francis area. Okay, okay. All right. And the other side was. Uh, I think that's what he's talking about. That's the one he's the other, the Oh, sorry, side. my boy. I thought you were talking about that. Oh, that's <laughs> right. Oh, no. Okay, no, 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 he's no. like his father. He's no, naughty. we want to hear the cock story on the other side. The other side was a place of ill repute. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. It was a Chinese brothel. Ooh, yeah. And they came straight from the paddy fields. Yeah. Straight from the paddy fields into that place. <laughs> into that spot. And uh, then it was up for sale. And they had the, it was raining, so they had the yeah. auction in my place. And I was quite keen to buy it then. Okay. But uh, the Chinese mafia and all those, uh, they were all, they, they bid and I wasn't going to get involved there. Oh, okay. So they bought it. The guy that bought it, he was actually Taiwanese. Okay. Uh, he, he bought it. His name was Elephant. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite funny. You, you, you negotiated with a guy called Elephant. Yeah. It doesn't sound right anyway. Yeah. She missed uh, Elephant. <laughs> but... Uh, out of the blue, one day he phoned me when ugh, we've had all this trouble in the country, and he said, "No, he's buggering off back to Taiwan." Okay, okay. And he said, "Hello, I said, Tim, do you want to go back to? Do you want to buy my place?" Okay, okay. And so he negotiated, so I bought it. Mm. And uh, so I went to my wife and I said, "I've got good news and I've got bad news." <laughs> yeah. I said, "The good news, my darling, is that uh, I bought a pub, yeah. uh, but it was a I bought a brothel. I beg your pardon. Bought a brothel. I bought a brothel." <laughs> Uh, uh, but the good news is I'm getting rid of the Chinese girls. So she okay. said, thank you, my darling. 
Oh, right. I said, the bad news is I came to bring Ukrainian girls in. <laughs> <laughs> that was before the trouble yes, in Ukraine. Yes, so it was funny course, then, yeah. it's not funny now. <laughs> I get called three years ago. Sunday afternoon, Helen Vale. Yeah. Right? Okay. I'm telling you, we're talking gangster paradise now. Okay. There's a monkey yeah. trapped in a tree in a schoolyard. Let mm. me tell you, you have no idea. Drugs and alcohol really make them go wild. So these guys are tossing rocks at the monkey. But you've got people standing on one side of the tree, people standing on the other side of the tree, and the rocks are going, bricks and yeah. rocks are going left yeah. and right That's over the so top. Nice. They're really hitting, and of course when someone gets hit on that side, then they start of throwing rocks at the monkey, they start throwing <laughs> rocks at each other. other. <laughs> now, now imagine this, eh? you've got hundreds of drunk people, Literally, there's thousands yeah. of people there. The whole there's a area, jaw happening. There, everyone's there. Everyone in the whole of Helen Vale is there. <laughs> yes. The cops are there. The riot yeah. units there. The animal oh, anti cruelty right. leagues there. Everybody's right. there. Right? Oh, my word. And the monkey in the middle of this. And the monkey sitting in the top of the tree. Oh, there's no true. hope for catching him, etc., etc. Yeah, it's yeah. just that there's only one way the monkey's got to go. But he needs to go so he doesn't get mauled and injured because they yeah, really do. Right, if they see. get a hold of it, they maul them. Okay. Anyway, so the monkey's in the top of the tree. So... I take my trusty silence point two to out yes. against my yes. chest. Now I've got to go and listen. The police actually have to clear the way because these they are going ballistic. Yeah. There's just no control. Yeah, yeah. They absolutely they're almost uncon and the stones are flying and the bottles are flying and it's just going <laughs> wilder and wilder. So I get my way through the crowd with the police's help. Now I get into the school grounds. First you lock the gate. Go in. Now when I start walking, I just hear this chanting behind me: sniper, sniper. 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 So the whole lot are just chanting. Sniper. 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 So now I get into the school grounds. Yeah, yeah. They must know, hey, this is not something I get paid for. This I've got to do a favor. Yeah, animal Anti Cruelty League said this animal's going to be badly injured. You need to do what you've got to be done here. Okay. Get inside. So the kind lady from Animal Anti Cruelty League comes and says, you know, Arnold, these kids see so much violence. Yeah. Can we not? I said, listen, the monkey's is on the top of the tree. There's yeah. nothing I can do. Yeah, yeah. You know, the monkey's not going to come any lower. He's going to stay right up high there. I've got to take him. Up from the top of the tree. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, now it's getting even wilder and there's a hum and everything. Yeah. She says, listen, can you not do it in a way that they can see nothing? I said, no, it's impossible. <laughs> I mean, it's an open school field, one tree, yeah. 5,000 people around, the, <laughs> banging against the thing, throwing rocks and bottles. What can I do? Yeah, yeah. So I take a nice rest on the side of the building. Aim, beautiful shot, headshot, the monkey drops out the tree. Yeah. Hits the ground, but as it, hits, as it starts falling, you just hear this crowd chanting. Skid on that's a cop bar, skid on that's a cop. The whole lot of them are chanting. These little children are all chanting it. Obviously, the way they brought up in the game. It was frightening. It was a frightening indictment on the area and the people. And you have to have sympathy in that kind of environment. I mean, how did those children get brought up? And that's what they're all saying. You know, forget the children are not used to violence. Yo, I must say, the fishing guys have been good to me. I had a lot of luck. I caught a lot of beautiful fish in my time. And uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm born out of the Pisces side. Yeah, okay, the okay, the two fish as well. So maybe that's something to yeah, do. Yeah, right? and the twin, eh? Yeah. The twin as well. Uh, the worst weather you've ever encountered? Coming back from Bird Island, seven hours in an in a easterly that was coming more over the boat. And <laughs> we were going more through waves than going over the <laughs> <laughs> Seven hours to do thirty-two sea miles. Whoa. I mean, that must be that must be a bit scary then. I mean, you, uh, no, you it's scary. Really, yeah. I'll tell you something. When you when you come to Saint Croix, you get behind the lee of the island, but the wind is screaming fourteen knots. And I, I don't know if you've ever seen this uh, harbour, a uh, bay, what it looks like in the sun. No, it's heavy. Yeah. It's heavy. <laughs> And what and this size here yeah. is yes. that yeah, size yeah. there. No, it yeah. comes from you like that, and you got to go over the top, and as you go down, and then wave pushes you back, and then you go over the top, and you make it so slow headway. Yeah, yeah. And then you eventually get behind and cry, and everybody takes a man. But when you're going through the big seas, nobody's chatting, yes, nobody's right. laughing, everybody's just checking, <laughs> checking around. What's coming? What's coming? I mean, it must be big. There must be big sea. That I mean, uh, sea. no big, big sea. Probably, yeah. you know, we we we. That's the worst sea I've ever been in, other than in Cape Town. Yeah. So we we have we've had some 
fun experiences on the boat and we've had some yeah. scary experiences yeah. on the boat. Hairy, mate. I remember we went out fishing the one day to uh, what we call the crayfish packs, which yeah. is south of Cape Receive. Okay. We used to fish in 110 meters of water. So we used to let out sometimes up to 300 meters of anchor rope out in order to Ooh. anchor on there. So, this particular day, we, you, you never really know how strong the current is until yeah. you've put hook down. Okay. Okay? okay. Put the hook down, boat settled with quick speed, and we knew, uh, hang on, this current is going. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And we Six caught fish, caught dots. fish, came time to go home, we, you know, we caught a fair amount of fish. Yeah. We used to use what they call a, a, a buoy which, yeah. with a ring around the rope. Yeah. What happens is you ride against the, the rope. That boy is pushed back by the water, and that actually lifts the anchor up for you. Ah. It saves you having to yeah. pull by hand. Right? Up. You know, okay. you know where yeah. you use two yeah. or three guys to pull. You know, once meters. on the water, one guy pulls it in. It's so much easier. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> yeah. this particular day, the anchor got stuck, and yeah. it didn't want to come out. And I remember it on Sea Princess. We had two Yamaha 150s on the back. Yeah. We got to a stage where my dad was flat out. You and did. the boy went down, 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 and we weren't going anywhere. You. And Mike from Fury was actually on the boat with us that yeah, day. Yeah. And the sea was also big as well. And the, now the rope is attached to the front of the boat. Okay. So as you come up, it, that rope will want to pull the nose over. So oh, you've yes, got to be careful for that. Yes. So, so we released a little bit of pressure, pulled back a bit, pulled back a bit. Eventually the boy came up. Second attempt, my dad says, pull it around the, where you have a cleat on the back of the boat, yeah. put it around there. So we're pulling from the back of the boat rather yeah. than the front yes, of the boat. Yes, yes, okay. You know, less chance of being pulled over. Yes, jeez. Second time it happened, went even further, harder, pulled back. The boat started pulling back. The motors are actually being pulled under the water. Under the water, do you like that? You water and, only on the deck. And by, by now, um, yeah. there's, a, there's an extreme amount of worry and people know. Yeah. This, this the water on the deck. Yeah, situation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, my dad said to uh, Fires at the time, he said, yeah. Fires, grab a knife. Yeah. If it doesn't come off this time, yeah. cut. hold <laughs> and cut. Yeah. We're going to jump but hold on, don't go yeah, overboard. Yeah. And we pulled, we pulled it, and it was, we were, any moment we thought, okay, we're gonna have to cut, cut through. Because yeah, yeah. if, you know, you can imagine if you flat out with two big 150s, yes. and all of a sudden you release the pressure, that boat jumps, yeah, it yeah. flies. Yeah. And um, we, we, we thought any moment now we're gonna have to cut, and next thing, oh, you, you felt the ass lift up, yeah. and the ankle line came loose. Yeah. But it's, it's probably one of the most scary We battled for times. almost an hour to get an angry with that day. It's, you know, it's something that makes you respect this even more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we had some light scares, eh? We had some light scares. I mean, uh, light scares? The, the floodlights. Oh, um, oh right. Yeah, yeah, that is always... That, uh, we were always on the edge with a... With a, with a <laughs> always on the edge. Yeah. And uh, the Warriors played... Not so long ago, they played uh, the Free State team. They changed yeah. their names a bit. Okay. They were called the Eagles then. Yeah. And uh, we needed to win that game to get through to the final, which meant we would go to India to play in the Champions League. So it was big. Wow. Okay. And the lights went out. Oh, man. David Callan walked past the front of the president's suite. Yeah. said, Dave, your light's on fire. It's smoking. Oh, <laughs> Callan, <you> know, <laughs> Callan's a bit of a prankster, eh? Yeah. So I didn't try to ignore him a little bit, but I looked in there. The smoke was coming out. Oh, yeah. So we got all of our maintenance electrician. We always have people on, on site. Yes. And he was on the other side of the duck pond. Oh, yeah. I'm going to get across the way. And my late brother-in-law, Trevor Bealby, happened to be yes. our guest in the president's suite. And he's an electrician. So Trevor, better come and look. So he came and looked and shone a torch in. And as that had happened, uh, the maintenance guy, our electrician, arrived. Yeah. So Trevor said, give me, your, give me your clippers. I need to cut this thing out. I said, what the can you cut a wire when the... Bloody things on fire. I mean, Ooh. it doesn't make sense. Cut a long story short, he yeah. cut a part out. I don't know what the part yeah. was. Bypassed it, and the lights came back on. Oh, my so, soul. Yeah. <laughs> and in fact, that, that part he cut out was taken by one of our suite owners, Philip Putziger. Yes. Put it in a, <laughs> no, put it in a frame and put it in his suite. Did he? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, ah, we also had that same, self same uh, test series against yeah. Australia where Colin Eager was the manager. Yes. And Colin Eagle was a particular old guy. He was an umpire, an ex-umpire. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he would 
uh, the first day of the test match we got out, you've got to take the cover off three hours before the start of play. Yeah. No, lo- no, not short or longer than that. Okay. And we got to do it about 10 minutes late. You know, you're yeah, yeah. relying on public transport. It doesn't always work perfectly. Yeah, yeah. And Colin Eagle was there and he saw we taking the cover off late and thought we were trying to give Savik an unfair advantage. So he was a bit of a, oh. a thorn in our flesh there. So okay. he it's therefore like, made oh, a okay. habit every day of coming there and snooping around at 6 o'clock in the morning to see us taking our cover off. <laughs> So on the Saturday, we, the game starts on the Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It's reaching a good, it's a good test match. Yeah. And it starts raining at about top of 10, 11. And I sort of think in the back of my mind, you know, we put covers on for years. We practiced it. We put covers on. We watered the covers to see if they don't leak. Yeah. I think we should be okay. So I get to the ground the next morning at about 6 o'clock, which was sort of my habit to get to the ground early during a, a test match. And Andrew McLean walks on the field, Percy, as we all know. And he was ashen-faced. He really was. I said, Percy, what's going on with you? He said, Dave, I can't tell you, but you could get around the corner before I tell you. <laughs> oh, I had a hunch last night at about half past 11 yeah. that the covers were leaking. I mean, he had no indication. So he went and walked in the covers and there he felt a squelch on the pitch. Oy. So you don't, I mean, to take the cover off and work on a pitch during a test match is just not, yeah. not done. But a bit of a rock and a hard place. Yeah. So they pulled the covers off and there it was, a water, water patch just on the length. Oy. So Mr. Norman Kherber stayed on the premises. He was yeah. MacGyver. He, he just okay. can do anything. And a guy called Dave Atherton. Yeah. Uh, he was also, also a MacGyver. Yeah. They then cut two 44-gallon drums together apart. Huh. Soldered elements, heating elements into there. Huh. And they heated this pitch back to dryness. Holy and normally you'd think it would leave a watermark, mark. Yes. but it didn't. Your. Cover back on. To this day, Colin Eager, I wouldn't think he's still alive. Yeah. Colin Eager doesn't know. <laughs> only now the Geno Spot audience knows. Yeah, right? there you go. <laughs> and the most nervous that you've ever been. Nervous. Um, yeah. Whew, yeah, um, let me think. Probably when... Um, a cobra, I was doing a, my first demo with a cobra, yeah. and you know, you've got the famous trick where you swing your foot to make it stand up to hood, uh, uh-huh. because they concentrate on movement, and then what you do is you move your foot away, and it strikes, and then it looks, it looks pretty nifty, yeah. and I did that, and strike and hit my foot, and Aye. hit me on the foot like that, oh, yeah, and then um, for the rest of the talk, which was an hour, yeah, I was before, like, I was like, <laughs> as it, as it touched and me. I, I feel I've got a prick there, but... Is yeah. that a thorn? Is that a nail? <laughs> and you get paranoid, whilst, but you don't want to tell the people. Yes, of course. You, you, uh, and, uh, yeah, you know, no, it's fine. You do worry. Your toes all of a sudden go like this inside your shoes. <laughs> and you worry. But yes, that, that's what I'd say. I was pretty nervous, nervous then. Then. Yeah, yeah, I'm very nervous. <laughs> that type of stuff, yeah. I suppose it, yes. can, I mean, it makes it go into your, your... Yeah, it's a neurotoxin, so it stops your breathing and all that stuff. Oh, really? And then whilst you're talking, you're going, am I breathing? Am <laughs> I was not breathing. About, yeah, I'm so you do worry a bit, yeah, you do. It's funny. <laughs> it's funny, funny now. It's funny now. Funny yeah, now, yeah, yeah. Oh, I did that again. Okay. Yeah. Oh, my word. Um, the, what, what about the luckiest thing that's ever happened to you? The luckiest yeah. thing? Yeah. Also, Grover that bit me on the nail on the toe once. Like, you know, so it didn't go. Yeah, like it was you. I can't confirm it actually did that, but yeah. in my opinion, it did that. Okay. Also, um, my first ever encounter with a puffer in the wild. Yeah. I was walking and I stood on it, like oh. on the puffer, oh, and it bit all around my leg. Yeah. I was oh, okay. about <laughs> thirty k's from the nearest car, oh. on foot. It bit all around my leg, but never touched my leg. Oh. I, I sat there afterwards and I said, I know the books are saying that a puff had a bite is painful afterwards. Yeah. I'm feeling no pain. So okay. what is happening? And the puff had a slang there looking at me and I'm like amazed. <laughs> that was, I said, that was luck. Um, yes. Nothing happened. And I was wow. like, yeah, that was pretty amazing. Very didn't because, have teeth. And I had a Rockies on. You know those old Rockies slip slops? And I was yeah, on his yeah. back like that and he just came up like that. And, and literally four or five strikes and no, he just missed me. Like, but, um, okay, what's something particularly spontaneous or irresponsible that you've ever done? Irresponsible? I mean, what, I mean... Yeah, I mean, I can you? take you back to something. Um, I, um, but it takes a while, though. Um, no, bring it on. 
I, when you talk about irresponsible, this was irresponsible. So I was telling you about um, our development we did at Pekinwood Golf Estate. Yes. Okay. So um, we got invited to Malaysia by our Malaysian partners mm-hmm. to go to the World Cup of Golf. And it was the first time that Tiger Woods had ever gone to Asia. Yo. So we got a group of people together. Um, I was one of the directors. I was, well, well, I was director of sales then. Yeah. And our two um, shareholder part, two partners, not, not partners, my two bosses, yeah. um, they flew with us. And we took a whole lot of investors that had invested at Pekinwood over to the World Cup, and we yeah. were there for a whole week. So this is properly irresponsible. And um, <laughs> we um, we got to the week, and we spent two or three days doing our thing and watching the golf. Yeah. And I was obviously because I was in charge of sales and marketing, I was looking after all our guests. Of course, you had to stay with them. Yeah, had to stay with the guests, and the next. Um, I remember, you know, obviously on the Wednesday, that Wednesday of the, of the week that we were there. We were going to have a board meeting yeah. and uh, with our Malaysian partners. And now you must understand the Malaysian partners, all these um, Chinese guys and um, yeah. Malaysian guys waiting at the top of this building and uh, where, where, where the boardroom was. And um, I took my guests out on that Tuesday night and yeah. obviously it got a little bit out of hand. Yes. Came back to the hotel and I put my alarm on and thought, you know, I've got to be at the meeting by 8 o'clock. And... Um, the hotel was here, and it was the Mines Resort City, so very much like Sun City. Okay. These guys had developed it, and on the okay. 10th floor was a building across the way from this. It was an old mine filled up with water. Oh, wow. Okay. So I had to get from the hotel across the water to the building oh, geez. and go up to the 10th floor for okay. the board meeting. Yes. And the uh, board meeting started at Hoppus 8, and yeah. I can remember waking up at quarter past 8. Oh, okay. Sure. Now I'm thinking, well, what am I going to do here? So I Shit. quickly got dressed. Um, I was unshaven. Yeah. And... Uh, Got into the ferry, ferried myself across the uh, the, the, yes. the, the lake, <laughs> the got to the other side, hole. into yeah. the into the lift, up to the uh, main floor, walked in there, and the secretary was waiting. She said, uh, "Are you joining the meeting?" And I said, "Yes." And I had my sort of my pack of yeah. stuff that I do, my presentation that I was yeah. was, was going to do. <laughs> and the worst part was, um, I walked in and. As they opened the door to let me in, there were these six or seven um, Malaysian, our Malaysian partners sitting with Jagger and Tyler. Oh, no my boss and uh, my MD sitting with our chairman and yes. sitting with Jagger and Tyler. And, and I had a pair of chinos <laughs> and a golf shirt on oh, because man. they had told me prior to that it was going to be very casual. Casual. And I, as I walked in there, I looked at this and thought, oh, oh heavens, my what are we going to do? Like, so yeah. talk about irresponsible. And as I sat down, um, my MD looked at me and he said, well, seeing that you've arrived late, can you do your presentation? Okay. Cheapest. <laughs> tell you what. And you know, say anything. There's no proof. You know, don't forget to ask Brighton about the little yeah. escapade with Ernie Else at the airport. Oh, 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 oh yeah, yeah. yes, please. Yeah, we're going to be at the midnight, I see. Nah, uh, but uh, <laughs> Gary's already gone to sleep at the back, yeah? But anyway, <laughs> Ernie Else, let me just tell you something. I stayed with Gavin in Cape Town. I took a little car up for Sir Dipstry, my mate. Yes. A little Mazda Mitch something. Okay. You know, it took me like four days to get there. It was farting and <laughs> spluttering. <laughs> bloody smoke all over the place. And, Second hand. Uh, yeah. I took the car and I was supposed to bring the smart Mercedes back to PE. Anyway, the Mercedes wasn't ready. I and I stayed with Gavin the night. And then I said, Gav, I've got to take this little uh, dinky toy back to PE. Yeah. Tomorrow. So I said, oh, Laka Marty, don't you want to stop over in Somerset West? We're having a... a Adidas golf day there. Yeah. Don't you want to stop? Uh, Ernie else is going to be there. I'm oh. picking him up at the airport tomorrow morning and so on. So uh, yeah. stop there. I said, no, Lekka, I'll do nice. that. Brrr, phone rings. 20 to 9. Yeah. Ernie's landing at 9 oh. in Cape Town. He says, Nefty, we're in trouble. I need your help, boy. Now, what now, Gav? He says, look, I cannot get to the airport to pick Ernie up. Can you please go and pick him up? So I said, uh, Gavin, this little dinghy toy. Are you like crazy? The, the man is six foot six. Yeah. So, luckily I know Ernie, yeah. because I looked after him for Adidas at Fancourt for a whole week. Okay. You know, when he, when he joined up with Adidas, he was there for, for uh, American TV shoots and, and all sorts of shooting uh, thing. Yeah. Anyway, so I, uh, I, uh, luckily I knew Ernie. Yeah. So, I, uh, so Gav says, Marty, you can, you, you've got to get to the airport. You know, this is going to be more embarrassing if you don't get there. To, so, so I stop at the airport, I jump out the car, and here comes a cop. Hey, you can here park him in here. <laughs> so I said, no, 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 come for Ernie Elshold. And die clean, Kariki. Meneer, you brought cock. 
So I said, nee, 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 nee. Ek gaan jou, ek gaan jou skryf. So I said, okay, dan moet jy maar skryf, broer, maar ek moet die in. Here and I run in there. I'll go to Avis, I'll go to Budget, I'll go to all the car company, yeah. Hertz. I'm looking for a Mercedes or something. Yeah, you know, yeah. hell, this is only yeah, else, yeah. man. And uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with a little car. I'll just leave it there. They must well scrap it or do something. I don't know. I'll, I'll tell Sid the, the how, the thing, how it worked in the end. Anyway, uh, it's too late. So I just, here comes Ernie. Okay. Hello, Ernie, how are you? Hello, Nifty, how are you? Lekker, lekker. So we say, hello, I say, Ernie, what are you I'm feeling a bit embarrassed now, yeah. but uh, you know, it's set of circumstances. Uh, yeah. I stayed with Gavin last night. He asked me to come and pick you up. <laughs> Gavin's my... car. Oh, Nefty, what want to worry you. I said, the car is so clean. God, I don't know how to get you in the car. I don't know how to get you in the car. He's got a big stock in He had a bag like this. Anyway, and uh, now everybody's running with Ernie. They want signatures yeah. and things. So I'm saying to myself, how do I pick this Ernie else up in this little midget car? Yeah. So, Hey, there's about 14, 15 people, so I drive around like that, and I come back. Now there's seven people, so I drive around, mm. and I come back. Three people left, so I think it's not too bad now. <laughs> now now I'm trying to get this bag into the car. Oh, this yes. only else's bloody bag. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and I'm trying this way, and that Back way, and this way, car. and the boot open, and everything. <laughs> anyway, eventually, I get the bag in. I leave the boot open, and I take my belt off, and I tie the bloody <laughs> uh, bag. Ernie gets in with his knees on the dashboard. Yes. He's sitting there, but he's like a tall. Yeah. I'm now sitting down here. So off we go. He says, oh, Marty, who can it? No, like a Ernie, but I'm, I'm, I'm sorry about it. What are you worrying about? Yeah. My Japanese taxi driver in bloody Tokyo or wherever, yeah. he comes and fetches me in the same little car. <laughs> right. So, you know, it's like it, no problem. Anyway, we get there. Now there's also a heap of people. So I say, Ernie, get out here. Yeah? And walk down. Sorry, I can't drop you off in front of them, you know. I'm, I've got respect for him, you see. <laughs> and, and I've got respect for us as a brand, you know. Yeah, so yeah, I just want to... Yeah, yeah. Anyway, wasn't a problem. I maybe overreacted. Yes. Uh, Ernie goes in. I drive off back to PE. It takes me four days to get back to PE, but it was <laughs> lucky. Now, I go with Gustav to the British Open, uh, Kent. And uh, I say to Gustav, let's go and watch our Ernie uh, warming up here, you yeah. know. So I stand there. They've got a Hessian fence. And I'm looking through the fence, saying, hey, he's nearly finished, Pussy, we'll say hello to him. Oh, lack of that, looking forward to the now, Gustav, he's very excited. So Ernie comes walking along, I say, Ernie, it's your Japanese taxi driver from Cape Town, boy. <laughs> so he goes, he takes a fence and he pulls it down like that. Hey, nifty, how are you, man? You know, Gustav just, his eyes lit up like that, oh, we're so lucky. Okay, you know? yeah, yeah. okay, so anybody who doesn't know, I'm, um, believe it or not, I turned 50 uh, in mm. July last year. So. Uh, I've had quite a big year, so not only have we moved, moved to Port Elizabeth, I got married, and we had a beautiful daughter last October, on the 8th of October. She, she's just into everything, she's so curious, and we wanted to bring her up that way. She's in South Africa, she is literally taken with us wherever yes. we go. She loves people. So we're at the beach this day, and we've only taken her to the beach once or twice, but this day, we put her down on the sand, and off she went. <laughs> And um, I, I thought, this looks really sort of cute. And I, th I said to Danny, she looks like a turtle. She looks like a little turtle trying to get to the water. And, and the rest is history because, as I said, I put the video up thinking, OK, a few people will watch it. That was almost sort of eight, eight or nine days ago. We're over 20 million views on this video. 20 million 20 views. 20 million views. On this so I can spend hours and days writing all this wonderful historical content, trying to, you know, add to education. And I promise you, listen to this, Gina, my following, which was quite big on Facebook, yeah. was, was about 22,000. Yeah. Since then, we just passed today in the last hour, 75,000 followers. Unbelievable. As a result of the Little Turtle video that you're going to see now, I'm sure. So. Let's have a look at the Little Turtle video. Oh, my <laughs> <laughs> so again, she needs is a helmet and a, yeah. and, a, and, a, and a camouflage and she'd be going to the jungle. You, but you watch her speed up now, she looks good, she thinks, shall I go for it? And then she speeds up. This is the thing, she's thinking. You can think of it. Am I going to go for that scene? Yes, I am. And you watch the speed. All right then. Oh, there we go. You, you, watch, you watch your sand spray in a minute, she's off. <laughs> but she looks back for Dad's reassurance any minute now. She's, watch this. She's just seeing where you are. Oh, she shit. goes, off she goes. And then, 
Just chicken. Oh, <laughs> and the cheeky smile. I, I, uh, I don't know who she gets that from. I think um, I think probably her mum will say <laughs> me. I don't know. But um, no, the, the funny thing was about that. We had such traction and everybody kept saying, I mean, millions of people were watching this. And we had thousands of people saying, where's part two? What happened when the little turtle reached the sea? The problem was when the little turtle reached the sea, I was in my speedos. <laughs> Holding Very grim. and uh, and that I'm afraid I never thought me and my speedos would be viewed by eight million people, but that's what's <laughs> happened as well. So, well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the show tonight. Uh, next week we'll also have another recap, and because um, we're going to be doing our uh, our thing out there, so make sure you support. If you're in Bushmans on the 29th uh, of December, or if you're in uh, if you're in Bushmans again on the 4th of January, we will be there doing our shows. So, uh, so make sure you come and support if you see us out there. Thank you again to our sponsors, Spa, Fitch and Leeds, and of course our uh, Amobia. Um, a special thank you to our new sponsors for our show that, are, that uh, have been supporting us live, Fitch and Leeds, Sovereign, and uh, Hunters. Hunters been uh, fantastic too. Sovereign, uh, Gerald and the guys, uh, we, we hope that you all have a great year. Uh, year ahead and um, and we'll see you next week Tuesday Lega. Relax it down Coming out of PE town Don't drink find the shot Never mind your liver get to Gino spot Gino spot Get to Gino spot Gino spot Have a laugh have a giggle and exercise your middle have a Gino shot